my experience at the Maritime Alliance's Blue Tech Week was certainly a unique one. I don't believe it is very often that students get to immerse themselves in a very industry-driven conference. I believe this experience relates significantly to the topic I decided to focus on. I decided to hone into the concept of the Triple Helix. This concept was first introduced to me by Michael Jones, president of the Maritime Alliance, during our coastal lecture. That same idea was driven home this week in many of the talks that were given. The Triple Helix represents three distinct entities working together. These are government, industry, and academia. Going to the summit as a class and part of a university, I felt that we partly represented the academia side of things, and many of our interactions were with industry and government representatives. My personal quest in regards to the conference was to gauge the respective interests of the Triple Helix by the individual sectors of the blue economy. The, sec the sectors I investigated, ranging from wastewater treatment to biomimicry and sustainable seafood, all expressed the value and importance of the Triple Helix. When I proposed the qu this question to the wastewater treatment panel, here was the response. Um, the Maritime Alliance has kind of highlighted this like, trifecta of industry, government, academia. Is there a similar focus within the kind of wastewater treatment context? And if it is, like, how is that kind of manifested? We've done a lot of work in Canada mm. uh, because the Canadian system is, for funding innovative technologies is dramatically different. And so in, the, in America, we've got two grants. In Canada, we've got 63. And so it's a different focus. You know, what they've done is made a significant commitment to industry and uh, engineering sciences. And so we actually formed a subsidiary, created an R&D group in Canada, and we invested in becoming a, a community-based group that has a circular economy based on getting grants, hiring students, training all these professionals who are coming through. So we've had it last summer with 16 interns, mm. you know, at our R&D facility. <coughs> this is a big deal. The other thing that we've noticed in the wastewater treatment industry, they have quite a bit of pool for technology, but it's not really funded. So you're kind of on your own, and it's really difficult. It's, it's expensive. It's a very slow adopt. It's not easy. Uh, the technical barriers are significant. It also requires significant knowledge in the industry, and so a lot of times these innovations don't come from industry. Right. And so then you got another barrier, like us. You know, we come to this industry as an outsider. We have to find our foothold and then recruit talent, and but we kind of become quote an insider because we know enough, right? To be successful. And so, so there's, a, there's a dilemma, and it needs to start at a regional, local, cluster level. So the Maritime Alliance is unusual because they're really trying to foster a community that has all these little touch points for technology, for inventors, and developers. So we think it's really critical. I'd like to extend a big thank you to the Maritime Alliance, the IRA committee, the panelists and speakers, and of course to Dr. Sean Anderson and the ESRM program. Thank <laughs> you.